is a kind of a brief one, but an important one. Just a few safety items. Primarily, I'm going to talk about what finger wrap do I prefer. But first, I think it's really important in your workshop that you just stop at Home Depot or Amazon or somewhere and get yourself a full-blown first aid kit. You know, a kit that's got band-aids in it, it's got uh, all sorts of antiseptic wipes, it's got uh, antibiotic wipes, things to clean your hands, cold compresses, uh, tweezers, a lot of things come packed in these. The fact is, I'm glad I decided to do this video because I opened up the kit and I looked in there and I found all sorts of things I want to try to remember are there for the future. So, get yourself one of those. Uh, you might, you never know when you need that in your workshop and need it quickly. The second thing I kind of recommend is in your workshop apron or in your back pocket or somewhere, I highly recommend you have your cell phone on your person. Uh, I have a habit of hanging mine up over by the computer to recharge. And that's really not the brightest thing. What if I fall off of a ladder? What if I, you know, do something really serious and I'm one of those, hey, I've fallen down and I can't get up. Well, it doesn't do me any good to call 911 because I can't get to my phone. Now, if I did something really, really bad and I'm in a position where I can't move for whatever reason, it would be a good idea if I had the phone on me so I can call 911 because I'm normally in my workshop by myself. So that's just a word of wisdom for you to think about. Now, speaking of uh, first aid kits, I have tried a variety of uh, band-aids and not happy with really any of them. When I cut myself and I try to use band-aids, I always find they unwrap a little bit and with my OCD, drives me absolutely crazy and I, I really don't like it. I, I saw a video by uh, Stumpy Nubs talking about these finger wraps and his idea was maybe you wrap your fingers when you're doing something that's really really prone to splinters and that you do finger wraps in lieu of wearing gloves and I think that makes a lot of sense. I recently uh, put my finger part way through my bandsaw blade right below the nail and halfway through the finger a little bit into the bone. So I've been doing a lot of bandaging for the last uh, couple of months. I did that back in July. I have tried uh, this 3M Transpore. Uh, I'm not really a fan of that. It, it tears off nicely. It's translucent. Uh, but it's kind of stiff and slippery, and I don't like that feeling, particularly when it's wrapping a finger and I'm trying to get down and feel things, and I've got this stiff piece of uh, slippery stuff. So the 3M Transpore, I don't recommend. Maybe you would like it. There's another one called, uh, well, what is it called? 3M Mini Microspore. 3M Microspore, and that's much softer and very, very thin, and that's a good wrap, but here's the problem. Trying to get it off is a real work of art. So I get that on there wrapped up several times, and then the only way I can literally take it off is to get some pair of scissors on it and cut it off. I don't like that much effort. It's not very flexible once you get it on. Uh, so the transpore I don't like, the microspore I don't like, what I like is the one from 3M called Coban, C-O-B-A-N-L-F. And that this is what that looks like. It's nice and flexible. It adheses to itself. And because it's flexible, when you're ready to take it off, and let me uh, show you here. So here's uh, the trans, uh, this Coban on my finger. And the nice part is that it generally stays really, really well, but you can get it off. And so I like it that way, and it's more flexible. So it, it just for me, it works a lot better, and it's become my go-to. In fact, there's five of them showed up today from Amazon. I got five rolls 
for under $10 or around $10. So that's going to hold me probably, <laughs> considering my age, for my life expectancy. It's real easy to put on there. So whether you're covering um, a damage or whether you're covering just your fingertips to avoid splinters. In other words, you can wrap all of your fingers and this one feels just like your finger. You can actually feel through it. So that's the one I like and uh, that's my uh, really advice for today. One more piece of advice. Uh, when you're done for the day and you want to get your hands clean, just going inside and using soap and water is okay. But a lot of times we'll have a CA glue on our hands or a regular glue or a variety of other things. So I like, um, let me get the right screen here. I like this fast orange hand cleaner because it's got some pumice in it and the pumice is little grit. So that helps you clean up your hands a lot better. So I just keep that up near my first aid kit and I clean up my hands before I go in the house. That is what I have for you today. I encourage you to join uh, a group that we have called Small Workshop Woodworking Community and that's a Facebook group. Just do that search. Go to Facebook, just do a search. Small Workshop Woodworking Community. We have over 300 members. Uh, we try to post a lot of things uh, every day so there's some new activity. I kind of watch for you a lot of the videos that I'm subscribed to that get released and I try to pick the ones that I think relate very well to having a small workshop and or beginner novice type of woodworking or fundamentals and uh, a lot of guys are, or gals are posting some of their projects and some of their projects are fantastic. It's a good way to get some good ideas for your future prospects. So join our group, Small Workshop Woodworking Community, a group over on Facebook. If you're anti-Facebook, I certainly understand. <laughs> we'll see you uh, other places. Small Workshop Guy, signing off.